Welcome everyone. This is a steel BG65 blower. Although my label was missing on the outer cover there. BG is short for Blasgerat. Yeah, right. <laughs> Which is a German for leaf blower. Some think the FS on the steel weed eaters stand for fast start. That is Freischneider. Yeah, <laughs> which means line trimmer. What can I say about this blower? A lot of things I prepare for winter, like my mowers and trimmers, doing the basic gas drain and run the engine till all the fuel's out of the carburetor, storage maintenance, stuff like that. If you're going to store something, definitely don't use that fuel saver because I've seen cases where that stuff just gums everything up, so I wouldn't use that fuel restore, that fuel saver, or whatever it is. Don't use any of that stuff. Just uh, drain your gas out, crank your engine, and run it till it stops. This blower is an exception in the sense that, that uh, I use it year round, not only on the job, but around the house. Uh, I'm rounding out my fourth season of using this blower actually and all I've done is change the air filter twice a year. I'll give it a good blowout with an air hose here and there and clean the spark arrestor. Uh, like I say, I got this about four years ago at Joe's Tractor Sales, which is a local steel dealer here in Thomasville and I bought it used. so. Actually, this is one of the best blowers I've ever bought, and I didn't even buy it brand new. It always starts when it's cold, like I said, six pumps on the primer with the choke on full, and the throttle wide open, and it'll fire in the first pull usually. Well, lately it starts, uh, but uh, like I say, it's after you run it, it's a hard start. Like. If you run it for a while and you go to start it again, it don't seem to want to start. <laughs> so that means technically it's broke and we need to fix it. So this is a great blower and I want to continue to blow off all the surfaces I need to with this. Okay, on this video I'm going to be using a couple of things to help me fix this machine. And one of them is a tool kit. A carburetor toolkit from HIPAA and uh, I really like HIPAA stuff but it always works good for me and I'm going to be using a carburetor kit which I'll show you. I have several different types of two-stroke machines around here from steel to Husqvarna and I work on different stuff for people like from Troy Bill and Ryobi stuff like that and a lot of these Zayma and Walburl carburetors have special adjustment nuts on them and uh, those are for the high and low adjustments on the carburetor and I really only have very few of these tools and I'd often run across an adjustment I had no tool for so with this I couldn't imagine they missed too many variations with this kit it also includes uh, cool cleaning tools uh, to help you get through all them crevices and passages and stuff in the carburetor. And this kit will save you a lot of headache and it's just $21.98 and uh, can't beat that. And uh, it's just a pretty good deal. HIPAAstore.com, go there and try their products. You can get a free gift for new users and see what's on sale and more. They have everything you need and they do make fixing machines a lot easier. <laughs> HIPAAstore.com and I'll share a link in my description that will take you to their store. They have lots of stuff for uh, small engines and uh, they certainly have everything I need hopefully to whoop this BG65 back in the shape. Uh, I intend to rebuild this original Zayma carburetor on this BG65. So I ordered a kit from a local steel dealer. I 
I've also ordered this kit from HIPAA on eBay. You can also get this from HIPAA on Amazon. This kit is less, and you can get all of this stuff separately, and it has everything I need. I will also have a spare carburetor in case rebuilding the original one doesn't work. And I put these carburetors on a lot of stuff here before, and I personally had no problem with them. And <laughs> FYI, these brand names are also made in the same country these are. Okay, when I push these two clips in, that cover is going to pop off just like that. Then your air filter is going to come off right there. Then you'll notice you have two mounting nuts right here. This is a 5 16 driver to take these bolts off. Okay, then this plate's going to slide off. Let's pull that off. You'll see your carburetor right here. Okay, I'm using a T27 Torx to take these bolts out on this housing cover. On this pull start housing cover here. You have one up top here too, right here. And then another one right here. Then your pull start will come off. If you look here, you'll have two fuel lines you'll need to take off. Now we get our T27, we've got to take this handle off so we can get our throttle linkage off. Now I need to remove my spark plug wire. You see my throttle linkage is right here. I need to remove that so I can pull my carburetor off the back. Slide this piece off right here. This is why it's important to take pictures, you know, see how that goes and see how you took it apart. And I'm going slide my throttle out of there. Okay, now I can take my carburetor off. Pretty nasty and dirty. This is a Zama carburetor. This actually has steel Zama on it. As you can see. And where is it made at? <laughs> I'm going to compare the new HIPAA carburetor that I got with, with this original Zama. As you can see, there's really not much any difference between them other than the dirt on mine. I've had pretty good luck with these carburetors from HIPAA. But I'm going to be rebuilding that one. To get this apart, I'm going to be using the Phillips head screwdriver on the top here. Okay, once you have your four Phillips head screws off the top, this will come off. And then this part right here is going to separate from the carburetor. Might have to take a screwdriver and kind of 
I've had this four years and I've never taken this carburetor apart. And that thing is getting weak. Getting very weak. In fact, there's hardly any play to it at all. Okay, then we're going to take this top part off here. It's a Phillips head also, or you can use a slot screwdriver. And once again, you may have to use your screwdriver to kind of encourage it. That kind of looks, that's going to come off the top there. Okay, now to take out your needle, you're going to need to remove this Phillips head screw. When you do that, be careful that your spring underneath there don't fly up and hit you in the face or get gone. We're going to be replacing that one anyway. But I save those little parts in case I lose them. I have been known to lose needles before. <laughs> it's good to have uh, some spares around of these little parts. You can keep those parts. In case you're ever rebuilding and you lose something, and that's our spring right there. Luckily, didn't go flying everywhere. I'm going to keep that just to keep it. <laughs> okay. Take that screw on out there. Okay, I'm going to be using this mini pick and hook set from Harbor Freight. This one in particular to get this strainer out. Then I've got some carbon choke cleaner. I'm going to clean out the outside of this carburetor or clean it off with the aid of a pretty stiff nylon brush. Then I want to remove my high and low screws. I'm going to remove the cover off of this high screw first. Then I'm going to use my HIPAA A circle tool to get that out. That's our high and low screws removed. We're going to be using these HIPAA cleaning tools that come with our kit here to really get down into the passages on this carburetor and clean them out. I'm also using carb cleaner. I'm spraying into the holes and then running whatever size I need to through these. I like these brush cleaners here too because these go down to a really small size too and you can get down in them holes and get any crud out of there that you need to. All nice and clean I think. Just a nice little cleaning assembly there. Okay, I'm going to do a f final spray out on this carburetor with some carbon choke cleaner. Make sure every all the passages are clean. Looks pretty good. Then I'll blow out with air. Clear all my passages out. Okay, to get this needle back in, I like to just go ahead and drop my needle down in there and then take my inlet control lever and just kind of scoop it up there and get a hold of it. And then I've already installed my spring. It's just kind of sitting back there. Just make sure you got your inlet control valve turned where that nipple is going to catch that spring. And then I'm going to get my spindle adjusted to where the 
indentions are there for it to sit and I just put my thumb there and hold it and just don't get that spring caught up under there in the wrong way it's got to be under that nipple then I put my screw in so Phillips head screw and just make sure you're needle is going to move then I'm going to make sure that my inlet lever the top of that's just sitting slightly below a level surface I like to use a tape measure you just want to have that just slightly below your level surface there and if it's not you're going to need to do a little adjustment okay we're going first on the top here with our metering diaphragm on top of that's going to sit your gasket and then our flange is going to come next and I've already installed my new bulb there I'm going to install my high screw first with my A circle tool from the HIPAA kit. Let's turn that all the way in and then back out about a half a turn. That's what I usually like to do quarter, half a turn, three quarters. <laughs> this is a slot screw here. You can use a small Phillips head on the low screw. Now I'm going to reinstall my strainer with the aid of a little slot screwdriver there. Now comes our pump diaphragm first. That goes on and then our gasket. And then our cover is going to go on next. And that has a Phillips head screw you can use a slot screw driver actually to tighten that too and that's our carburetor reassembled rebuilt reassembled right now out of our HIPAA kit I'm gonna go ahead and just put some new gaskets on this thing and I like to prepare my gaskets with a little bit of grease just rub that grease in them and that'll make them last a long time if you have to take them back off it makes them less likely to stick to something and it ain't gonna hurt nothing it ain't gonna keep them from sealing or anything we're gonna go on with that first then our carburetor it's gonna slide on them two bolts Now I'm going to hook up my fuel lines. They're pretty much going to go back like they're coming up like you took the carburetor off there. Okay, I got my outer gasket on there that my air filter cover is going to set against. I'm going to use a 5 16 socket to tighten those two bolts up that hold that on. Okay, next thing we want to do is uh, change our spark plug. And that's a 13 16 spark plug socket that plug's been in there actually four years <laughs> it's time to change it I think even if it don't need it uh, that's pretty nasty needs to 
go baked, cooked. We'll put our new HIPAA spark plug in there that come with our kit. Never had a problem with these. They work as good as a champion. Tighten that up. Okay, now we're going to service our muffler. We're going to take these two T27 hex bolts out here. Everything is T27 on this, people. I don't put it up there. It's T27. You can finagle this thing out of there. I don't want to take the whole dang thing apart just to take that muffler out. So I figured out kind of a way to get these out. You just got to mess with it a minute. And that's your muffler. We're going to clean the gunk off of this thing and spray it out. Make sure it's clean and don't lose your gasket that goes behind that. I'm going to use some carbon choke cleaner and I've got a pretty stiff metal brush. I'm just going to clean that off real nice or best I can. Wipe it off. I want to clean that off real nice and then take some air and blow that out. Make sure I'll my air is going through my muffler with no obstructions. You can use brake cleaner to clean these out too, works good. Okay, and then we're gonna clean our muffler gasket off also. And that's our muffler serviced. Okay, now I'm gonna put my throttle control back on to do that. I want to open up my throttle makes it a little easier there just open it wide open and slide that in there then you're going to slide your control piece on there then put that on that post right there just like that just make sure that's working for you Okay, now we're going to put our handle back together. Make sure nothing's binding there in your handle. Okay, you also want to look at this back piece right here because that kind of sits in a groove right there. Just make sure that's in that groove coming around there and you're all nice and together there. And there's some wires that run for the kill switch to the coil. You want to make sure those don't get caught up under that cover and get pinched. Ask me how I know about that. Okay, now we're going to put our screws back in the handle. These are T27s. Everything's a T27 Torx on this. BG65. We'll just tighten those down. You don't want to over tighten none of this stuff, this plastic stuff. Just get it nice and snug, otherwise you'll be turning and turning and turning and nothing gets tight. You'll be breaking plastic. Just get it moderately tight. And that's our handle reassembled. Now we're going to put our starter cover back on. Now one of these screws, this top screw, is going to be a rough thread, Torx 27. And your other three that go in there are going to be fine thread Torx 27s.
like this one, fine thread. Keep all your hardware together in one place so you'll know how it goes back. Take lots of pictures. <laughs> That's why one of the reasons I do these videos, not just for you all, but to help me out too. We'll get these tightened back down on our cover. And that's everything put back together, I think. Pretty much. We're about ready to go. Make sure you're grabbing your start there, your engine. Okay, one thing that I need to do also is change this fuel filter or fuel pickup. Just get a long screwdriver. And a pair of needle nose pliers kind of like going fishing for flounder in the ocean <laughs> you'll eventually get a hold of it I tell you still don't give you much fuel line to get a hold of here And that's our old fuel filter and on with our new fuel filter from our HIPAA kit. I think I'm going to use a pair of needle nose pliers to kind of hold my fuel line while I'm doing this. Maybe I can slip that back in there so I don't drop that fuel line back down in there and that worked out pretty good now I'll just send it back down in there now I'm going to install my air filter out of the HIPAA kit you got two slots there filters all the way down that should slide back in those two slots and then it's got a locking tab there Just lock your cover back in make sure it's on there feels good put my gas lid back on and reinstall my spark plug boot this is all the crap I've replaced here I'm about ready to try my carburetor rebuild here and see if I can get any action with this steel BG65 sometimes these car rebuilds work out sometimes they don't plus this carburetor is probably about six years old this is the A circle tool and we'll need a flathead screwdriver for the low adjustment. Try it again. 
start and see fuel underneath this thing here. See that fuel? And I'm smelling it too. So we got a defective carburetor, I think. Well, I tried to take this carburetor back off and clean it out again very thoroughly, but I couldn't find any blockage. What I think is going on is it's leaking around my throttle assembly. Yes, maybe after a hundred million times of doing that right there, that's just wore out. I need this blower right now. So, like I said, it's a good thing that I got the uh, HIPAA kit with the extra carburetor. I'm just going to take this new HIPAA carburetor that come with the kit I've got and I'm going to install that and we're going to get this thing running, hopefully. <laughs> turn my high all the way in and back it out about a turn.
Okay, through our top hole here, we have an idle adjustment. I'm gonna try moving that up just a little bit. Okay, I turned my idle up just a little bit. Let's see what happens. A symptom I was having before was I could run this thing a while, let it set a little bit, then it wouldn't want to start. So I'm going to see if that problem is solved. I'm not going to choke it. Okay, that symptom seems to be solved. My idle may be just a little bit low, and I'm going to set that up. Otherwise, I think it's good. In conclusion, I'm glad you made it this far with me, if you have, on this steel BG65 adventure. <laughs> Attempted rebuild on the original steel carburetor failed because there were problems with the unit. It is fall and I need this unit running and it's my go-to blower here, both here and in the field. So as the case, I ordered a complete HIPAA tune-up parts kit for this BG unit, 
which included a new, but not OEM, but a working carburetor that doesn't cost more than the blower's worth. And that included the parts that I needed to change the air filter, spark plug, the carburetor gaskets, and to change the fuel pickup and the fuel filter. I also cleaned out the muffler and uh, this may be a temporary thing on the top, this hour meter here, but I'm gonna leave it on there for a while. I thank HIPAA for sending me the tachometer hour meter and I very much appreciate the carburetor adjustment cleaning tools. And friends, this kit here is a must if you work on your own carburetors and rebuilds. This kit will have practically any special adjustment tool you're going to need for a two-stroke carburetor, like a Walburro or a Zama, on many different brands like Troy Built, Ryobi, uh, Echo, Steel, like this one. You've seen we had a special adjustment on the original carburetor. It's a good chance you'll strip the threads out trying to turn those with a pair of normal pliers and it's just hard to do. You're not going to be able to run whatever you're doing and try to adjust it at the same time if you're trying to hold a pair of uh, pliers. Then you'll end up Jason JJ cruising the threads. <laughs> yeah. So get your kit now. It's only $21.98 with the included cleaning tools or you have the option of getting a spark tester with your kit or a tack hour meter like we have here for just a few more bucks. That's your option. Go to HIPAAstore.com to get your free air filter right now also. They have great deals on air filters for all types of lawn care equipment from all the major brands. I've used their kits for a pretty good while actually and they're 100% guaranteed if they fail you can get your money back so you don't have anything to lose. And I got a subscriber that's actually going to send me an RPM tack meter and uh, we'll try that out on something else. Another thing I'm going to do is get a carburetor pressure tester. I'm thinking about getting this one from eBay maybe. And uh, we'll just see about that coming up. I appreciate again the uh, kind folks at HIPAAstore.com, HIPAA360 on eBay and Amazon. Many blessings from my house to yours. Until the next time, take care. I just had to make something to put there. Nighttime in America.